Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel, and I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. So this is the continuation of the Mesilas Yesharim, which is uh, explained as the way of the upright of the path of the just from the Ramchal, Rav Moshe Chaim Mutsato. This is from the Yafa edition of Art School, and this is what the Sefer looks like, if you're still not aware of what what it looks like, and I will have a link below to their website. And this is part 93. Baruch Hashem finishing up with this chapter today, uh, chapter 22, which is the trait of Anava, which is defined as humility. So um, what I was discussing in the last few uh, videos was about this uh, um, category of Anava uh, um, in conduct, and there were four different categories. I'm just going to repeat them. Um, and you can go back to the videos as well to see more of the details. So they were the four um, traits or the four uh, categories where uh, anava is practiced by conducting oneself in an unassuming manner. That's the first one. The second one is by tolerating insults. The third is by detesting positions of authority and fleeing from honor. And the final one today is by conferring honor upon all people. So that's the one that I'm going to be finishing up with today. So um, the fourth category is conferring honor upon all people. As we have learned in the Mishnah, Avos 4, Mishnah 1, who is honored in Hebrew, it's Eza Mechubad HaMechabed Es Habrios, he who honors others, who is honored, he who honors others. The sages further said in Pesachim 113b, from where do we learn that if one knows about his fellow, that the latter is greater than he in Torah scholarship, even with regard to only one thing? He is, then he is obligated to accord him honor. So how do we know this, etc.? So the commentary says that the Gemara there derives this principle from a verse in Daniel 6.4. Many people are hesitant to ascribe honor to others out of resentment that the other's honor will diminish their own. The humble person who is not preoccupied with his own honor will easily ascribe honor to all people. That's from Matnas Chelko. Then it continues, <laughs> excuse me, initiate a greeting to every person. And the sages said in Brachos 17a, of Rab Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai, who was the leading sage of his time, that no one ever greeted him first, meaning he always initiated the greeting, even to an idolater in the marketplace. Amazing, right? So one must honor one's fellows, both with words and with deeds. Indeed, the sages of blessed memory have related in Yuvamos 62b, regarding the 24,000 disciples of Rav Yakiva, that they died because they did not treat one another with sufficient respect. It is surely fitting for the righteous to be a source of honor for others. Just as degradation is something that is associated with the wicked, as derived from the verse that we mentioned above in Mishlei 18.3. With the arrival of an evildoer, scorn arrives. So too, honor is associated with the righteous. For honor resides, uh, in, for honor resides with them and never is separated from them. Uh, in, in this vein, the scripture states in Yeshaya 24, verse 23, and in the presence of his elders, honor. So what does this mean? The commentary says, it is told about the great sage of Yerushalayim, Rav Isser Zalman Meltzer. It's funny that I, I'm uh, saying this uh, when I'm recording this video. I actually had mentioned that person's name in a phone call, so that must be Ashkacha, right? Okay, so this great sage, Rav Isser Zalman Meltzer, that when he attended a wedding, he would often stay until the end, a practice uncommon for a man of his age and stature. Asked about this habit, he responded, I wish to share something with the bride, groom and bride, but I cannot afford an expensive gift. What I can share is honor, which I have in overabundance. By staying this long, I am honoring them and thus sharing with them some of the honor that people bestow upon me. Very beautiful uh, way of um, expressing himself, how he, how he did that. Okay. Uh, to continue here, um, so Ramchal now concludes his discussion of the trait of Anava. The principal elements of humility have thus been explained. As for their details, they are like the details of all categories of study, which always expand as the principles are applied to actual situations, according to the particular issues that arise and according to the different times and places. And commentary says that conduct that in one situation or society or era would be considered humble, may in another be considered pre presumptuous. The general principle of anava described here must be applied to the many varied situations of life according to the particular circumstances of each period and location. So what he's saying is, I'm um, just uh, paraphrasing, is that it depends on where you are and where you're at and what's going on. 
things may be uh, not acceptable there that maybe were acceptable somewhere else. Okay. Um, and then he continues. Um, then it says in, uh, in Mishle, um, 1 verse 5, let the wise one hear and increase his learning. Okay, and then having concluded his description of Anaba, the Ramchal notes the beauty and des desirability of this precious, precious, precious trait. Excuse me. See, it is certain that Anaba removes many stumbling bl blocks from a person's path and brings him closer to many benefits. For the humble person cares little about worldly matters and does not become jealous over its futilities. Furthermore, the company of the humble person is extremely pleasant and the spirit of people is content with him. If one has already attained anava, he will per force not come to anger or strife. Commentary says that anger and strife result from a feeling that one's honor has been violated in some way or that one has not been given, quote, his due. The humble who are not preoccupied with their own honor and do not view themselves as more worthy than others are generally immune to anger or strife. So that's anger. And I've also learned about anger. It's like uh, it's not from here, but I've heard that uh, from many different great, uh, great rabbis because um, you're thinking that you know better basically than Hashem, meaning when you get angry. So uh, because you think, you know, if some certain situation comes up that you're, you, you, can, you can solve it better. Okay, um, such as a side note. Um, and then he continues here. Rather, everything he does, this is talking about someone who's attained Anava, Everything he does is suffused with tranquility and everything is suffused with serenity. Fortunate is one who merits acquiring this trait. Amen, I agree. Whoever zoha, which means merit, this is something great. Now, indeed the sages have said in Yerushalmi Shabbos 1, 3, um, that, w that which wisdom placed as a crown upon its head, humility placed as the heel of its shoe. And the commentary says that Yerushalmi explains that fear of heaven is the, quote, crown of wisdom, as the verse states in Tehillim 110, verse 10, 111, sorry, verse 10. Reish is chachma yurus Hashem. You might have heard this before. It's pretty, pretty well known. That the head, quote, of wisdom is fear of Hashem. At the same time, fear of heaven is termed the, quote, heel of humility in the verse in Mishlei 22, verse 4, um, where it says, Ekev anava yuras Hashem. The heel of humility is fear of Hashem. Thus, that which wisdom placed as its crown, meaning fear of Hashem, is the very same thing that humility placed as its heel. An additional commentary says that the Maharal in the Siv Ha'anava, chapter 1, explains as follows. Wisdom leads to fear of heaven because by gaining an awareness of the intelligent design of the world, one comes to recognize that he must fear the Creator. However, not everyone makes this progression from gaining wisdom, from gaining wisdom to fearing Hashem. Fear of Hashem is therefore called the, quote, crown of wisdom. It is the prize that wisdom can confer upon a person who scales its heights. Humility, by contrast, naturally brings with it fear of Hashem. For a humble person has a keen appreciation of his own limitations and automatically lowers himself before the one who is the source of all. Fear of Hashem is therefore considered the, quote, heel of humility, that it comes along with humility as a matter of course. Such is the inestimable value of humility that the elusive, quote, crown of wisdom, which is fear of heaven, is the naturally ensuing, quote, heel of humility. Very uh, interesting and uh, insightful um, commentary from Maharal. Okay, and then he concludes here. So now, this, now this, is, this is because the entirety of wisdom cannot equal the rank of anava. This is clear, he's saying. Okay, uh, as far as what we said about the heel. Okay, now the summary of chapter 22. So the trait of anava, humility, has two facets. Anava in outlook, which is a humble self-perception, and anava in conduct, which is a humble manner of behavior. Anava in outlook involves internalizing various factors, the inevitable deficiencies that each person has, the limitations of one's talents, the obligation that those talents place upon him, the fact that they are inborn and not achieved, the general state of lowliness of all earthly creatures, and finally the puniness of one's own accomplishments and wisdom compared to those of earlier generations. And anava in conduct consists of humble comportment in four distinct areas. One, generally behaving in an unassuming manner, meaning in one's manner of speech, manner of walking, choice of seating location, and all similar things. Number two, tolerating insults with equanimity. Three, detesting positions of authority and fleeing from honor. And four, treating everyone with respect. The details of these requirements are as varied as the situations of life. Beautifully said by the Ramchal. And I, this is the end of the chapter. Bezer Hashem starting a new chapter next time. And I hope and pray that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach. 
speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMegish. Amen and thanks for watching.